Welcome back, Wolfpack. Vrola here. This is how to use Ninetales, Venomoth, and Doug Trio. So let's start off with Ninetales and those stats. Don't really have much to say because it's just a 100 base speed Pokemon, 100 on that special offense, 81 on the special attack, 75 on defense, 76 on attack, and 73 on hit points. So we have a decent amount of special defense bulk, but we don't have a lot of offensive power, and our 100 base speed is okay. Like, it's on par with a lot of other Pokemon, so we have, like, speed ties, and we outspeed tanky Pokemon, and that's kind of it. But we're not going to be an exceptional sweeper, especially with 81 on the special attack. 81 on the special attack is terrible, honestly, so... We need some kind of buff or change or something. That's how it is for Ninetales. And that, it is a pure fire type. And for that pure fire typing, we're going to have a weakness to ground, rock, and water. But we get a lot of resistances, so we can be a little tanky as well. Bug, steel, fire, grass, ice, and fairy. And we can all see the offensive type matchups for mono fire as well. Looking at Venomoth, even though it has less stats than Ninetales, I'll say that's a lot more useful because of moves and moveset stuff. But Venomoth, 90 special attack, 90 speed. That's really all there is to this Pokemon because hit points aren't that fantastic with the defenses and bugs aren't really meant to do physical attacks at this range. So there we go. We're going to get destroyed by a lot, but we can turn that around with Quiver Dance. We got typing Bug Poison. Bug Poison, interesting typing. We're going to have four weaknesses. So we get our bug weaknesses, rock, fire, flying, and then psychic from the poison. Also, we have some resistances as well. Fairy, Grass, Bug, Poison, and Fighting. Pretty balanced defensively, which only leaves us with Dugtrio. Dugtrio is a very fast Pokemon, and surprisingly fast at that. 120 on that base speed means we're not going to have to worry about too many things outspeeding us. Now, in the 5th generation, it was a lot better without Greninja and Noivern and Pokemon like that, or Mega Evolutions pushing the boundaries of speed. But at the same time, 120 is going to be solid against a lot of Pokemon. 80 on the attack means we have some offenses to back us up, but we're really just speed. And that's kind of it, especially with 35 on the hit points. Oh my goodness, we have like nothing for hit points. Pure Ground is going to work, mostly just because Stab Earthquake is amazing. If you don't know what Stab is, same type attack bonus. 50% more damage on ground type moves used by ground type Pokemon. And the weaknesses are Water, Grass, Ice. We have the immunity to Electric as always. And we resist Poison and Rock. So those are going to be the stats and typings. Now let's go over and hop into Pokemon Showdown. We start off with Ninetales. So Ninetales going to pretty much be only used for drought and unfortunately Mega Charizard Y has pretty much invalidated anything that Ninetales could be. So using it in doubles, singles, all kind of the same. What you want to do is set up the drought, hope you outspeed your opponents and then do as much damage as possible. There is one benefit to drought and that is Sunny Day will make it to where you have 50% more damage on fire type moves so special attack gets a little better. Kind of pushes us up to around roughly, I think like a 130, 135 special attack. Only while Sun is out, only while we're using a fire type move though. Then we just like Heat Wave, Stab into Life Orb, and I hope to get the most damage down as possible. Also, Solar Beam is only one turn, so good grass coverage right here. Then we have Confuse Ray and Psy Shock. Psy Shock, Psychic, adds to the list of things we can do. And Confuse Ray, I think it works out. If we can outspeed a, an opponent that's trying to set up and just lock them down a bit with that Confuse Ray, they hit themselves in confusion, they eat a huge Heat Wave under Sun, that might be a way to knock out some Pokemon without taking any damage, which is what Ninetales wants to do. Also, Ninetales can be bulkier or just can be like a Heat Rock Sun Pokemon. So you drought on that Heat Rock and that's going to give you eight turns of sunny day which is going to be really nice if you have like chlorophyll or synergy on your team for that works out in doubles pretty well and that's pretty much most of it like the heat rock's going to give you three more turns over a charizard y but you are going to have the same speed much less special attack and then you can play for the utility side of things so nine tails does bring good utility with that will-o-wisp and it can also run a couple of other things unfortunately it doesn't get the morning sun i think that that would be absolutely massive if it had some way of healing under that sunny day but when we look at it uh we get interesting things we can hypnosis so if we want to play that 60 percent accuracy game there's a chance for the hypnosis we have hex so there is ghost coverage on this pokemon as well foul play to do consistent damage to physical attackers on your opponent's side of the field and that's mostly it now there are some really interesting things that you could maybe do with the right setup on Ninetales, does get Calm Mind, so it can get really tanky. Also does have Safeguard and Nasty Plot. So on this offensive set, instead of Confuse Ray, you might want to use the Nasty Plot 
if you know you're absolutely not going to get blown up. Like, if your opponent's going for setup, Nasty Plot into Heat Waves will be pretty nice. And if you don't want to play that 90% accuracy, we have Flamethrower for just a little bit less damage. So, there we go. Uh, Nasty Plot, Flamethrower on that Sun with Life Orb will change some games. And even then, if you want to run, like, all offensive moves, um... That's the thing as well, we have like Dark Pulse and we have some other offensive move options as well. Then you can run Choice Specs. Choice Specs, it's just going to give you more damage and it's going to lock you down. So pretty much you like Specs in a Heat Wave or Solar Beam and then you hope for the best while Ninetales is on the field. And then again you have Bulk, Will-O-Wisp, Calm Mind, Confuse Ray. You can be more of an annoying Pokemon in singles or doubles, but it's mostly just setting up the long-term sun for your team. After that we have Venomoth. So Venomoth, it can do a lot of different things, but mostly it's going to be useful for having the most powerful move in the game. Quiver Dance, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed all at the same time. That's pretty ridiculous, and that means even if you like get some safe Quiver Dancing off, you might have a chance to survive uh, just special hits from the opponent, and that can work out pretty well. So you can run all kinds of things on this. I prefer the Focus Sash. That way, worst case scenario, you're getting off a of Quiver Dance, and then you pretty much win if you can get one or two Quiver Dances. Uh, there's a lot of effectiveness out of the Venomoth because, all right, Modest Nature, now you're going to have a really nice buff to your attack. You can also go and get enough speed to outspeed most Pokemon, unless you want to run Timid. I just prefer Modest, that way you can hit as hard as possible. And then you have the Giga Drain. So if you can super effective on a Giga Drain, get a lot of your health back. Now you have that special defense boost. Could last you quite a bit of time. And then you just have like Stab, Sludge Bomb, Bug Buzz, Coverage, Stab, good things like that. Then the Tinted Lens. So you have quite a few options for moves as well. Wonder Skin works out against an opponent's status. Status moves with accuracy checks are going to be 50% accurate when you use it on this Pokemon. So if an opponent's trying to hit you with the Sleep Powder, with a Hypnosis, with any kind of status, has a lot less chance of working, especially like a taunt. A taunt would be very devastating for the setup Quiver Dance on Venomoth, and that works out. Or you just Tinted Lens. Not very effective attacks gain double damage against that target, so unless you're using like a bug type move on a quad resist, you're going to be pretty much hitting anything neutral with your stab, no matter what, which works out pretty well, and that's kind of the damage that we're looking for. So Quiver Dance, go for one, go for two, try to knock down your opponents from there. Venomoth works really well as a lead because if they're setting up Stealth Rocks, if they're trying to get momentum on their field through their own setup, your setup could be a lot more powerful with this Quiver Dance, unless you go up against something like a Volcarona. I see that that's like the only situation where it could go pretty bad. Uh, using Venomoth in the late game as well works out, like if your opponent has weakened a bit, that if you have Stealth Rocks on your opponent's side of the field, or if you just have a lot of setup in your favor, then you just Quiver Dance once, and it's a lot easier and a lot more reliable to finish off your opponents, which might not have any sweepers, or which might not be ready for the late game Focus Sash. Other things Venomoth can do, it does get the Sleep Powder, which you can use to your favor, and then you can also like run different kind of moves, different setups, Baton Pass is going to be a big one on the Venomoth, that you Quiver Dance once or twice, and then you Baton Pass that, so now you have the Gift of Quiver Dance, to any of your opponents, and that can be devastating. You also do get the Psychic, uh, Psychic coverage over Grass or Sludge Bomb or whatever you want to do. Actually, Sludge Bomb, with all the fairies running around, Sludge Bomb's a little too valuable to just give up like that. You also have Energy Ball if you want more damage over the sustain from the Giga Drain, and then we have it like Stun Spore, Sleep Powder. That's where, like, you can make your decisions as well. If you're running Sleep Powder, you give up a coverage move, but your opponent goes to sleep. More guarantee on the Quiver Dance into two-hit KO, or two Quiver Dances into a super effective finish, depending on what Venomoth is going up against. Or again, you could just sleep an opponent, Quiver Dance, Baton Pass for free, and then things might work in your favor. And then there's Doug Trio. So Doug Trio is a crazy Pokemon because it's so fast, brings utility, but almost doesn't do a lot of like any damage actually. Life Orb will find you some 2-hit KOs on like Earthquake or something like that. I was thinking for doubles, Doug Trio works out because you Arena Trap the opponent. So unless they're airborne, you just stick them in there. And I like Doug Trio with the idea of just like going for a lot of multiple damage. You no, know, Earthquake's gonna hit the opponents fairly decently. Rock Slide has the chance to flinch. Or if you don't want to go for damage, you can just go with the Focus Sash and really just become a massive frustration because now you're fast. Now you're risking Fissure, or now you're threatening Fissure, and if the opponent isn't focusing you, you can maybe make that work out. You know, first turn, you use Fissure, they don't see you as too much of a threat. Second turn, they hit you, you use Fissure. Third turn, you use Fissure. You might find some KOs, especially if you're outspeeding the opponent at that rate, and also protect, use it to soak up a move. 
Mostly, you're just sticking in your opponent, using Fissure on them, hoping for the best as kind of just an RNG support. But you also have some damage to back you up if needed as well. This one's going to be pretty obvious. Jolly Nature, max speed, max attack. Doug Trio is going to put in the work. But then we have Gimmicks. Man, Durant is an interesting Pokemon because you can go Truant Entrainment with the Eject button. And all you have to do is really just outspeed your opponent. 109 base speed means you have good odds, especially against most leads. Use Entrainment. That's going to give them the Truant ability. They hit you. You eject button out. You bring in Dugtrio. And now they cannot switch out because of that Arena Trap. And you just actually need to run the Protect in this situation. I forgot about that. So the idea is with Truant, they're going to be loafing around. So that means you Home Claws, Protect. Home Claws, Protect. Home Claws, Protect. And next thing you know, you're going to be at plus six. So Earthquake is going to outspeed in one shot. So as long as your opponent doesn't have anything over the 120 base speed, you pretty much just win for free. I think Life Orb is overkill at this rate. Having the Focus Sash does work just in case they do outspeed you with a very high hitting Pokemon or something goes wrong somehow. Like if they have a Focus Sash or if they have a sturdy Pokemon, you don't want your Dug Trio going down to some kind of cheese like that. So you cheese them back. So you set up in that Stone Edge. You don't have to worry about the accuracy because with Home Claws, your accuracy goes way up and it doesn't matter at that point. And then Earthquake works out as well. Stab damage, hits whatever, GG. Stuff like that. Now, unfortunately, accuracy modifiers do not affect Fissure at all. Like, it would be so cool if you could home claw six times and then Fissure your opponent off of this strategy. But that's not how it works. Either way, Earthquake, Stone Edge, that's like one hit KOs regardless once you're at the plus six. As long as your opponent gets stuck with the Truant thing pretty much over at this rate. Um, other than that, Dugtrio does get a couple of other things. You can... Use Final Gambit, except you don't have a lot of hit points to really make it count. That would be some fun cheese. Just outspeed Final Gambit. That doesn't really work out in the end, though. You also do get the Sucker Punch, but it kind of goes against being like a super fast Pokemon. And I have seen people run the Shadow Claw on Dugtrio. Having the Super against Dart type, or having the Super against Ghost type and Psychic type Pokemon can be valuable, but that's kind of it. So mostly Dugtrio is going to be like just cheesing people with super amounts of speed. Or maybe converting the off to hit KOs or just covering in doubles pretty well. That's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's how you use Ninetales, Venomoth, Doug Trio. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.